So as much as I enjoy it, I think the literature is quite clear that there is no health benefit from alcohol. And none. none. I really believe, and we're working on a very long piece on this. So, um, so as you know, I have a podcast that comes out every week. We have a newsletter that comes out every week. We also, we have a whole bunch of other things, but, but the two other things that we, we work on a lot within the podcast, there's kind of a subscription thing where once a month subscribers get a very, very deep piece of content. Like this is like a 20 piece, 20 page article that is months of research and we're, we've been working on one on alcohol for quite a while now, for about the last four or five months. So th this question is so steep in my mind, right? And so we've reviewed every single study, including the studies that sort of suggest there might be a benefit to alcohol, uh, something called the J-curve, which means at very, very low levels, there's a bit of, you know, having no alcohol is associated with a higher risk of death than having some alcohol before the risk starts to go back up again. There's the so-called French paradox. Why is it the French can eat all of this fat and yet they have the lowest risks of obesity and disease? Is it the alcohol that's offsetting it? Of course, I think there's a million other reasons. And so we could talk about the proof for that, or we could just sort of take it on face value that I don't think there's any real benefit to ethanol in a pure chemical sense. All of that said, I think there are relatively low negative consequence for modest amounts with a few, um, call it exceptions and ways that you can manipulate it. And what is, in your opinion, a modest amount? A drink a day, okay. um, provided it doesn't have one of the two enormous knockoff negative consequences of alcohol. I think there are two really big ways that alcohol creates damage long before you actually see the molecule damaging your liver. Okay. Meaning, you know, because alcohol leads to fat accumulation in the liver. So alcoholic fatty liver disease is what leads to cirrhosis, which is this obvious consequence of, you know, when people die as a result of their alcohol, it's either acutely because they die in a car typically or chronically because of liver damage. Uh, let's put all that stuff aside. It's not that it's not important, but that's not what you and I are worried about. What, what certainly what I need to worry about when I drink are the following. Is this impacting my sleep? And if I drink more with, with less than three hours between bedtime, it will. Yeah, same, same. So that's rule number one. If you're going to drink, get it out of the way early. So I'd much rather have a glass of wine at 6 p.m. before dinner then have a bottle of wine or a glass of wine after dinner and have it bleed into sleep. The second area where I think the modest drinker can get into trouble, maybe you don't, but I think Lauren might be able to relate to me. Um, it will lower my inhibitions around other foods. So my, whatever little willpower I have managed to scrounge together to avoid dessert it goes way down after I have a drink. It's like why people go after they've gone out and they go get like pizzas or McDonald's or fast food. It's because like they would never do that normally, but now they got that buzz on like, oh, I'm going to go get that shitty food. Yeah. And, and honestly, I even feel it before I get, because I don't even drink to the point of getting a buzz. Like I probably would need three drinks to have a buzz. And I, that, that's a rare night. By the way, well in the business of shamelessly plugging restaurants I have no affiliation with, uh, Commodore, I don't know if you guys have been there. I have not. We been, have not. I've heard, I've, we've heard amazing things, though. Amazing, and the mezcal selection is out of this world. And the only reason I thought of that is I was there a week ago, and that's the only time I will violate my rule of more than a drink. And I will do four one ounce like shots of mezcal, different kinds. Diff yeah, four different kinds, but in progressive flavors. And, um, you know, again, what does it do? It just lowers your inhibition. You are just that much more likely to have dessert or whatever else is going on. The whole basket of chips. So <laughs> yeah. for me. <laughs> oh yeah. So if so if if you're saying one, maybe one drink is moderate a night, like what if you only drank once a week, but you had like four drinks? Would you say that's worse than having one a night? Or is it like probably a, a wash? It's probably a wash. I mean, I Look, I think four a week, four, four in one night could probably, you know, depending on the volume. Again, that's the other thing too, is we really want to think about it as grams of ethanol. And I know for myself, like if I'm pouring myself a glass of wine, 
sometimes it can be a glass is really like a third of a bottle kind of thing. <laughs> it's just like, did I have a glass? Eh, maybe. So one needs to be a little bit careful. Yeah, yeah, see. exactly. Um, the other question that's interesting on the, on the alcohol front is, is there anything sort of special about red wine, right? Because the argument might be, well, red wine has, you know, polyphenols in it and it has other chemicals that are antioxidants that may, independent of the ethanol, have a, an impact on health. In this case, a positive impact. The evidence for that is, I would say, inconclusive, but not that strong. So I think, you know, again, our net view on this, and again, I'm very open about this with my patients. I'm like, look, I'm not going to sit here and tell you not to drink, even though that's probably the healthiest thing to do, is don't drink crappy alcohol. So my motto is don't drink on airplanes, right? Because like the alcohol is garbage, right? Sure. So like, why would you drink garbage alcohol? Um, and then the, but then the other thing this all has to be counterbalanced against is I think the reason that the epidemiology typically shows an advantage to alcohol is the pattern in which alcohol is consumed. Like these studies don't look at people in college, like doing Red Bull shots, right? It's typically a more Mediterranean style of the glass of red wine with dinner which is very pro-social and I think has a lot of other benefits. Because social interactions have been proven to increase longevity in ways just because maybe you're a happier life. Absolutely. And I also think, and not that this is like carte blanche to just go and drink every night, but I think for many people, like a glass of wine is a really nice unwind. And I don't think we can fully discount or necessarily capture the benefits of that. When you deal with all these high performers, is there a lot of people that come to you with the alcohol question? Is that a question you hear often? Yeah, we talk yeah. a lot about that. Yeah. yeah, I would think that too, just because they live, like they're such high performers, but it's a lot of stress. So you get people who like want to wind down or have like a vice at the end of the night. For for people that are maybe, you know, not looking, like what are some things or some effects that you see alcohol have, alcohol have on the health system or on our bodies? That maybe people aren't thinking about like you mentioned fat i mean i think everyone knows about the liver no the, the effect sleep. on the liver is huge um if you do look at deaths of despair so what are deaths of despair so it's um overdoses so accidental overdoses so these are not you know people that are trying to kill themselves these are people who are taking drugs and they overdose and then suicide and then alcohol related death those are the three drivers of of alcohol of, of um uh, death, what I call deaths of despair, there's like 225,000 of those a year. Wow. So it really becomes a question. And this goes back to your point, Lauren, like, okay, you know, the really high stress person who's using alcohol to unwind, it's a slippery slope, right? Because you don't really want alcohol to be the crutch that you lean on to unwind and to cope with your stress. You don't want alcohol to be the thing that you lean on to blunt pain somewhere else in your life. And I think that one has to take an honest appraisal of where they are in that. It's one thing to say, yeah, like I really enjoy having a glass of wine with my friend and my wife or my whoever after dinner, like, or before dinner or whatever. And that's versus like, I am so high strung or I am so lonely or I am so fill in the blank where you're using alcohol as a crutch.